Myth 21, America is Ruining the English Language, chapter written by John Algio, video written and produced by Kaylani Beltran, period 3, AP English Language. America being the core of the language ruin we know today is seemingly common knowledge to everyone around us. It has been repeated over and over for generations continuously. So to what extent is this the reality of it? Right now, I'm about to show you why this statement is consistently taken in an incorrect context. Problem one, change is often seen as bad. There is no objective criteria for which a person could base their feelings of being the language police on. Think about this. Have you ever seen an adult who lives exactly the way they did five years ago? Ten? Of course not. People move, get new jobs, or meet new people who influence them in a negative or positive light. The same thing applies to all languages, including English. A language without change is basically dead otherwise. The hope that a language can change to better suit an individual's particular preferences is not only absurd, but almost impossible. Remember, a language cannot cater to everyone. Problem two, one phrase does not have to be more innovative than another. A few examples of this is seen through both American conservatism and British innovation in that Americans generally keep the R sound in most words, such as more and mother, even though the British lost that long ago. Americans also keep the flat A of the word cat in path, class, and calf. Also in have you the time, commonly used in British speakers instead of do you have the time, as used with Americans. However, it is truly not necessary for one language to be better than another. One language is not more useful than another simply because they utilize their syntax and syllables in a preferable way for some people and in a useless or nonsensical way to another. Problem three, the extent of the language does not defile it. Let's use preemptory and antagonistic statements as examples. Is my food ready? Well, it has to be heated up first, doesn't it? It is implied that the recipient of this statement should know better than to ask a stupid question when it is clear that it is not ready. Antagonistic is more accusatory than the other. Where were you? I was busy, wasn't I? Here it is implied that one needs to understand that through this display of irritation, you have no consideration for me. British people are supposedly more aware of American innovations than Americans are of British ones. Problem four, people believe that the foreseeable language future is grim. There is supposed to be some kind of magical golden age filled with happy unicorns and rainbows, but in reality, there is no such thing. Language has always changed over time, but people are unwilling to recognize such a thing. This current state of affairs was able to be seen long before by John Adams in 1780, even before it was apparent that the American Revolution was to succeed. English is now the leading language, just as Adams believed it always would be. Most people at the moment only see the current generation's rejection of old language ways and invention of new slang. Is this slang the underlying issue for all linguists? It really depends on how you look at it. Problem five, other languages don't have to be our competition. It seems that English has always been in a competition with another language no matter what. It has been accepted as the norm. But if all languages are as different from each other as they each claim to be, then the thing that is supposedly making them better is actually the very thing tearing them apart. Understanding that there are other ways of seeing or doing things, especially when it comes to language relations, is essential. So, is America seriously hurting the English language? If change, expansion, and new speakers are bad, sure. Whatever helps you sleep at night.